Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Mark Chalmers of Energy Fuels. How are you today, Mark? I'm great, Tracy. How are you? I'm fantastic, and let's start with the congratulations. We just finished publishing a headline story called Energy Fuels is on its way to becoming a major American rare earths processor. Let's start there. What's the news, Mark? It's exciting, Tracy. It's, um, you, know, you know as well as I do, we didn't announce we're getting in the rare earth business until April. So eight months later, uh, we signed a supply agreement with Kimors. And uh, it's a very significant first step uh, to reestablish processing of rare earths in the United States and mining in the United States, um, mining monazite and processing at White Mesa. So it's a been a bit of a whirlwind. And uh, you, 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 you got me off to a good start in the early days, Tracy. Send me the right directions, and I really appreciate that. And of course, what we're talking about is your new three-year supply agreement for Monazite with the Kimors company. Is that correct? Yes, it is, Tracy, and 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 um, that's a very significant first step in uh, reestablishing the rare earth supply chain in the United States. And for everybody out there who've been reading how we're talking about literally seeing a deja vu for some of the same formulas we saw in 2010 with the last rare earth boom. What we're seeing here is many people out there, of course, may not be familiar with the fact that monazite is an excellent source for rare earths. So if you could just give us kind of an overview of how this process is going to work. Yeah, well, um, basically the monazite ores that we're securing from Kimors, um, is very high grade. It, it, it runs between about 53 to 55 percent total rare earths. It has a very significant distribution, uh, NDPR about 22 percent, and uh, it's also got very high concentrations of heavy. So um, it is the MacArthur River Cigar Lake of the rare earth business in North America. So uh, that's one advantage is great, but the other thing is is that monocytes uh, are easier to process uh, than other sources of rare earths. So it's got a number of um, uh, advantages and and uh, basically what we're doing Tracy is we're replicating what CNNC is doing in China and has been doing for the last few years where they're sourcing monazite feeds uh, into China and now um, that's now possible to be done uh, in the United States at uh, Energy Fuels White Mesa Mill. Something I found interesting in this story that I was reading that was doing a summary of your web webcast, I mean, everybody, of course, is talking about this, is that you're going to be providing competitive, that the price for you actually producing, this has always been an argument on why we have to get our rare earths from China, that you're actually going to be able to provide a uh, competitive pricing. Is that correct? Um, we believe we're going to be world competitive, and it's for all the reasons I said, the, the grade, uh, the ability to process it, the existing facility that's fully paid for, licensed, um, has um, the ability and the, the, the permits to, to start producing uh, a carbonate, um, uh, a rare earth carbonate. So uh, yeah, we, we think um, we're in a very good spot, and we think we're at a substantial advantage over others for all those reasons. And we're, we're excited about the future. Your quote from your news release yesterday was particularly well written. You were talking about how Southeast Utah is fast becoming America's clean energy and critical minerals hub. I thought that was actually, that was, it's an actually quite a lovely commentary. Would you like to comment a little further on what you were trying to say? Well, um, if you look at um, that portion of Utah, San Juan County, uh, it's one of the poorest counties in, um, in Utah. Um, the poverty rate is uh, about 30-40% of the people live below the poverty rate. And here we have the White Mesa Mill right in the middle of that, uh, ready to go. And you know we started with this first supply agreement, which represents about 10% of the U.S. requirements. And we think we're going to be able to ramp that up. Uh, we're going to be able to make the, um, uh, a mineral hub, critical mineral hub in um, San Juan County in Utah, and I can't be more excited about that because I need the jobs. It's a great place to do business, low cost of um, living, uh, low power cost, uh, you know, all the, the ingredients for a successful outcome uh, in an area that needs the jobs, uh, you know, now. And, and, and so that's where we're at with San Juan County. 
It was also uh, intriguing the quote from the president of Titanium Technologies at Kumar, Brian Snell, was talking specifically about how you're going to be assisting them with their objectives. Can you comment a little further about what they're trying to do and what you're planning on trying to do together? Yeah, well, um, Kimor's has, has got a focus like ours of, of, of delivering more critical materials uh, in the United States. So it's our hope that we can we can grow the business together. Um, uh, they they believe that uh, they can increase in, in time um, more uh, monazite production out of uh, Georgia and Florida, uh, perhaps two to two and a half times more rare earths coming out of their company that potentially can be processed at White Mesa. So, so this initial step, the 2,500 ton minimum, uh, we hope is just the beginning of a long relationship and uh, also um, increasing the quantities over time of this high grade material. We're also talking to others, um, other potential monocyte um, uh, producers in the world. And so we're hoping this first agreement uh, is really a, a significant stepping stone for us uh, as as we start building up our capacity at White Mesa. And of course your timeline is for production as early as Q1 2021, is that correct? Correct. So you know, you're only looking about a few months away. Um, we'll be producing, commercially producing uh, the, the rare earth carbonate. Uh, we'll start looking at, um, uh, at separation uh, and, and in, in increasing the quantities that are coming into the mill. Uh, I also hope to be talking to some of uh, these end users like uh, um, um, Tesla and, and General Motors and Ford and Siemens uh, in 2021 as we get uh, you know, more coordinates on, on how we're progressing. I think this is going to be exciting for those that are looking for supply sources of rare earths outside of China and Russia. Mark, what should shareholders anticipate in the following quarter? Well, I think what they should anticipate in the following quarter is um, additional supply agreements, whether it's in front of us with, with feed sources or um, back to back with uh, separation. Uh, you know, we are looking at reestablishing uh, full integration. And um, right now there is no separation in the United States, so it has to go offshore. Uh, so we're working on that, uh, but we do plan on um, re-establishing the ability to separate and perhaps do metals and alloys uh, in the next couple of years. So all I can say to investors is watch this space. We're doers. We're not promoters. We're focused on successful outcomes. Uh, we are aggressive, but we're not reckless. And we plan to build a substantial critical mineral hub, um, uranium, vanadium, and rare earths uh, looking to the future. And it's just a really exciting time for our company. Thank you very much. Well, Mark, thank you so much for joining us, if only so that I can congratulate you and the team of Energy Fuels. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy.